I was asked to slow down in my last episode, so we will do our best as we revisit the Baofeng BF18H right now on Ham Radio Dude. But you're probably asking yourself, why do we need to revisit a $35 handy talkie radio? And the reason we need to revisit this is because I did a test on the spurious emissions and said that two meters was close, but a fail. And I said that 1.25 meters was a splatter box. I revisited those results with different test equipment and I came up with different results, concluding that one of the pieces of equipment in my test equipment had failed or was failing. With all that, let's revisit the spurious emissions on the Baofeng BF18, but also let's go ahead and take a look at some of the viewer comments and see if we can answer them to see if this is the perfect radio. And finally, I bought something. I bought a lot of things. Not one, not two, but I bought 10 Redivis antennas and they're all the same sort of antenna. So today we will go ahead and compare the receive quality of multiple radios next to the Baofeng BF18H. And it is important to point out that as people who are testing radio equipment, it's very important for us to admit when we had some sort of malfunction or failure. And in my case, it happened to be a cable in line and the cable wasn't always properly seeding with either the attenuator or the power meter. First things first, let's revisit the actual power levels and the maximum amount of power that I was able to get out of the Baofeng BF18H at that time was 3.8 watts. Now that I retest everything with a better cable, let me see what I get. I'll be just right back. My results were fairly similar, similar. We'll get to that in just a moment. However, what I did notice is my results were increased on each of the tests that I ran with the new cable. And so the results for testing the radio with the new cable are slightly better. On two meters, the maximum output power on high power that I got was 4.11 watts, which is a dramatic increase from the maximum of 3.8 watts that I received or had in the last episode. And therefore, the power levels are probably within a standard for a typical 5 watt advertised radio. I still didn't get any output power to display on my MFJ meter on the 1.25 meter band, at 222, two, two, excuse me, I did that last episode too, at 223.5. Two, two, and finally, on the 70 centimeter band, I did get a little bit more power, whereas before I was seeing 3.46 watts, now I'm seeing 3.62 watts. So there is a 0.2 watt or 200 milliwatt difference. But it is important to get the correct information out when I can. Right here I have a Regal Spectrum Analyzer, it's a DSA815 and I'm using a new 40 dB attenuator in line before entering the Regal. Additionally you can see I'm using 2 dB of attenuation at the Regal Analyzer. And this is my result for 2 meters. Now I did try to make the table and try to make things a little bit easier for everybody to read so I can kind of go through and explain what I see and you could agree or disagree with me in the comments below. I set my reference levels and tables so that it basically shows on the screen what we would see if we were putting out what would be full power. That being about 36.43 dBm, roughly. And that is what we see for our marker 1D. That's our fundamental frequency. Now any spurious emission or harmonic needs to be at least 40 dB below 36.43. Let's just say roughly negative four, and I hope that math is correct. So on high power, putting in 4.11 watts to the attenuator or through the attenuator into the Regal, we see that I have two harmonics. Harmonics are multiples of the frequency. And so spurs would be just any random frequencies where you see spikes but these harmonics are both under 40 dB or greater than 40 dB of attenuation. Additionally, there is another FCC rule and regulation which these meet and they cannot exceed what would be negative 16.09 dBm for the harmonics or the spurs. As you could see, marker 2D and 3D are both negative 19.95 and negative 18.62. The representation that I have on this spectrum is what I believe to be the accurate version 
as opposed to that first video. And again, people make mistakes. We're all human. And that's what's fun about amateur radio testing. Oh, whoa, 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 what's that? Oh, God, the comments are coming in already. If we take a look now at 1.25 meters, we will get a better representation there of what is going on as well. Here we have two spurs or we have a harmonic and we have our fundamental frequency. But we do have two spurs also to the left or under the frequency that we're transmitting on, which is pretty interesting. Now our fundamental frequency in this case is only putting out about 15.65 dBm of power. And remember my table is relevant to the 4.11 watts, or it should be which would mean that on 1.25 meters, I'm still putting out only 36 milliwatts or so. Most importantly, if we take a look at our fundamental emission of 15.65 dBm, and then we take a look at our harmonic, which is 445 megahertz. Again, look at 222.5 times two is 445.0. So that is a harmonic and it's at negative 14.4. And what is the difference between 15.65 dB and a negative 14.4 dB? It's within 30 dB of the primary or the fundamental emission. And the FCC standard outlined in part 97 specifies that we must be 40 dB or more below the fundamental emission, which means that this doesn't pass on 1.25 meters. UHF still looks good though. Now, you might have heard that there's no actual standard for 70 centimeters or UHF in the amateur radio bands, and that's partially true. Now, there's no numbers that say that your spurious emissions or your harmonics must not exceed certain levels, but as Part 97.307 outlines in Section A, no amateur station transmission shall occupy more bandwidth than necessary for the information rate or emission type being transmitted in accordance with good amateur practice. And that in the legal aspect would probably be called a catch-all, meaning this could be used if something or somebody was intentionally looking for a reason to hem you up. Regardless though, if you look at 70 centimeters, this 70 centimeter signal looks great. That being 35.62 dBm as our fundamental emission, and then our harmonic or our spur, depending on how you wanna look at that one, is negative 23.82 dBm. It ended up being difficult to listen to four radios on airband simultaneously whilst recording it all. So what I did is I decided to get the farthest repeater that I could hear with all these radios, and that was the K9IIK repeater. And with that, I recorded these five radios and their audio quality on receive, starting with the most expensive all the way down to the least expensive let me know what you think in the comments below. While I'm waiting for somebody to jump on that repeater, I did want to point out that user PMR446 has a pinned comment in my last episode. He talks about why this radio might sound somewhat distorted on AM mode, just like the Quangsheng or many of these other inexpensive radios that are coming out of the market with AM airband receive capabilities. And that's because this uses an RDA chip and it doesn't contain a true AM demodulator. Instead, it is achieved by masquerading as an FM slope detection. And again, that's why it sounds somewhat distorted. And he also mentions something that I do agree with. The power output is not as important as the receive sensitivity and selectivity. The offer from my first video still stands, and that offer is that I would be willing to meet up in Illinois and test this radio for receive sensitivity and selectivity. It's equipment that I don't have here at Glorious HRD Industries, but one day maybe we'll get there. Furthermore, if that doesn't work out, I would be willing to send this radio to somebody for testing on a loan. As far as receive goes, again, we have the same antenna on each radio. We have about five receivers to listen to. We're gonna start with the most expensive and work our way down to the cheapest. Let's start with the Yezu FT60. Air 
Next up, we will go to the Yezu FT-65. No, FT-4X. Down to the Baofeng BF-18F. And finally, the UV-5K, K-5. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and listen to all those again with somebody else talking on the repeater. In summary, let me know what you think below about all the radios that you heard. Which one sounded the best? I will say that I think the Linko DJ VX50, which was the second radio I showcased, I think that this sounds the best. Now, this radio also has airband capabilities and is confirmed IP67 waterproof rated. We're going to do more on all that here in the near future. But for $35, I think that the Baofeng BF18H still sounds amazing. And a lot of it is subjective to your hearing and what you like to hear. Right below me, I have a comment from Todd H.A. who mentioned that he has a BF-17H, which they look to be pretty closely related radios. If not, maybe the same. I don't know. And Todd mentions that he found a bug as listed below. And I did confirm that that bug is also apparent or present with the BF-18H. User John West says the first thing he wants to know about a Chinese radio is if it has a legal harmonic or not. And I would say the first thing I want to know about any radio is if it has a legal harmonic or not. Chris wants to know if this radio is worth a crap or not. And I like this radio and I would say it's worth two craps. User Jason wants to know if the RSSI meter works and I'll tell you no, it doesn't work. But I mean it doesn't work in the sense that it doesn't tell you an RSSI, at least I haven't found a way yet. And what it does is it works like a signal strength meter, and, and that works. Phil wants to make a complaint. He's not sure what he wants to make a complaint about, but he does want to know if there's an international line for complaints. And rest assured, here at Glorious HRD Industries, we will have 15 lines dedicated to your complaints only in the near future. But then also we have a question the UV-5R or the BF-18H? And that answer is hard to answer, difficult to answer, because I don't know what your needs are. Your needs might be different than mine, who might be different from somebody else's. The Baofeng UV-5R is fairly small compared to the 18H, but the 18H sounds better and seems to have better performance. In the future, we are going to do a battle royale of radios. And you'll be able to see there, but for $35, I like the Baofeng BF-18H better. There are some drawbacks that I do want to mention. And somebody had asked me, hey, I don't see this on the Baofeng website. Uh, are you sure this is a legit model? I don't have the answer to that because I just don't know. A lot of times I find these radios on other markets before they're even shown on the Baofeng website. So there is a good possibility this may be an official Baofeng product in the future if it's not already on one of the Baofeng sites. But furthermore, if you're looking for a radio and you see a Baofeng 18H that's just out to the market and has no in the field performance history versus a Baofeng UV5R, which has been pretty tried and true now for well over 10 years and has plenty of accessories that you could purchase for it, that could be a weighing factor in your decision. So if I would choose, I'd choose the BF-18H. 
especially because it has that USB-C, which we spoke about in the first episode. But I could see where everybody, everybody's going to have an opinion based upon their needs. User My Brighton says that he might get one of these Baofeng BF18Hs for the voice alone. And let me tell you, frequency mode. That smooth voice has kept me feeling secure over the past week of reading other people's hateful comments. Like the hateful comment from Chris here about the way I speak. It's not that I don't know what I'm saying, it's that I have a hard time saying the words. Frequency mode. That makes me feel better. Or who's that below there? What's with the hand movement? Kind of distracting. Frequency mode. Oh, thank you for putting me at ease. Is there more? Well, Kevin, you're always offended. I actually like Kevin. Hand movements are annoying. Slow down. Frequency oh. mode. Thank goodness. I initially did not plan on making a part two to the Baofeng BF18H, but I did think it was important to get the information out to you about my spectral purity. And most importantly, I think if we look at this as licensed amateur radio operators, we are allowed to test and experiment. And that's a lot of the fun. However, if you're testing and experimenting and not portraying accurate results, you're not doing any good. So that's why I thought it was important to show you my updated results. It also is important to do your due diligence with whatever radio you purchase to make sure that it is with impurity standards, meaning even though I can say that I believe this is impurity standards, you might get the same radio and you might find something that's not so pure because of a quality control issue or maybe even an equipment failure or a user error. And I say all that, somebody will ask me, well, should I purchase this radio? Here's what I'm going to leave you with. The Baofeng BF18H, I think, is a great radio. I won't use it on 1.25 meters. However... I wouldn't recommend it to you if you're the kind of person who's going to go out and buy this radio because you saw it on a YouTube video. And then you're going to go out and buy this radio because you saw it on a YouTube video. And then you're going to go out and buy this radio because you saw it on a YouTube video. Um, definitely don't buy this radio. You'll see why later. Because by the time you've purchased all these radios, you can get yourself a nice waterproof Alinko that does airband and has a much better receiver or maybe even upgrade to something like the Yezu FT60. But again, if you're just looking for a single under $50 radio, the Baofeng BF18H really hits the spot. So those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope I clarified a lot of the things. And I do look forward to the future because we have a lot of fun radios coming out that I'll get to show you here. Uh, the new TID radio, I can't wait to take a look at that. The new Oshan, can't wait to take a look at that. And plenty of more. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for watching the channel 73.